All right, here we go. Sunny Southern California. I'm an Ohio boy. Listen, the sun just came out down here, but I'm happy to be here in Southern California. We've got Division I Southern Cali uh, Wrestling in Southern California. Tell me about how that came about. Yeah, here at California Baptist University, you know, we've had Fullerton University in the past. They dropped their program a little while back, but CBU started a wrestling program in 2008. And uh, from my understanding, they had a few high-level California wrestlers walking around campus interested in a program, and the president decided to commit to the sport. He'd actually been exposed to it earlier in his life, uh, him and his father going to wrestling matches. He never competed himself, but he had some exposure to it. So he started the program, and a few, couple years later, actually, UC Davis dropped their program, Lenny Zaleski became market eligible as a head coach, and he was my former coach. This opportunity came to him as a man of faith, very intrigued, moving him and his family down here. He ended up taking the position in 2010 and building this program from NAIA to D2 and now to Division I. Um, and it was this university's plan um, over a long scale of time period to ultimately go Division I. Five years is the minimum amount of time that an institution can be in D2 after transitioning from NAIA then to go D1, and that's exactly what we did. So we sat out of postseason competition from 2010 to 2012, where we competed in club, and then we were D2 from 2012 to 2017, and that's five years, and then we sat out again of Division One postseason competition as we transitioned from Division Two to Division One, and last year, 2023 was our first year that we were eligible to finally compete in Division One postseason competition. So it's been um, it's been a long process along the way, and we've sat out seven of the last what was that five? I think um, seven years and five years, twelve years, seven of the last thirteen years we've sat out of postseason competition so that we can make the jumps to where we are now. And uh, challenging years for sure, but some amazing young men, families who have committed to be a part of this build. And now we're here tapping on the door to have our first NCAA qualifier come uh, after Big 12s this next weekend. All right, so a lot of information there. One thing I want to ask you is, how do you get those individuals to commit to this program, commit to Coach Zaleski, commit to you in this program, when they know they're going to be sitting out? You know. I, it, to me, in this, this day and age of, I want, I want my gratification right now, how do you get individuals to buy in for that long-term process? Challenging, challenging for sure, right? Um, a lot of doors were closed on us immediately just because of that unique situation where, you know, I, maybe I'm not competitive with those individuals, but I don't want that opportunity taken away. I don't want to know I can't make it to nationals as a freshman. So it was a lot of conversations, a lot of recruiting until we found the right individuals that said, you know what? I believe in what you guys are doing. I'm going to commit to this, commit to the training, and then you know, delay that opportunity until I'm a junior, until I'm a senior to go to the national tournament. That's what we saw last year. Individuals like Chaz Hallmark, Christian Nunez, Luis Rojas, who had been in the team for three, four years before they actually got to compete in postseason. And so it was a challenging recruiting time for us, for sure. But we're so incredibly grateful for those young men and those families that committed to this program and were pioneers for us um, as we use those four years to build team culture, to build branding in Southern California, and to build this program to where we thought it needed to be in order to make the jump to go Division One. And now we're seeing those benefits being reaped by the young men who are committing to come to our program now. I mean, Elijah Griffin at 125, four-time state champ out of Oklahoma, chooses to come here and has done amazing things. Unfortunately, he was injured last year, not able to go to the Big 12 as a freshman, but this year has been in and out of the rankings and beaten Steve O'Poolin, who was ranked third in the nation at the time. This next recruiting class, we have four top 20 recruits coming in from all over the nation to be a part of what we're building out here. So it's been a long journey for sure. And Coach Leski and I work in hand in hand and his decision to retire after a legendary career and the opportunity for me to step in and take over has just been a blessing. And we're excited about each year, the growth that this program's having. Being a wrestling junkie and, a, and kind of a, a just a moron fan that I am, I, I find any level satisfactory, NAIA, as you mentioned, D3, D2, uh, D1. 
why the long term, what, what, what's beneficial about being a D1 program and why was that the, you know, the pinnacle of what, what this program was headed towards? Why? I, I don't exactly, I haven't spoken to the president and asked him about that, but obviously the brand awareness that comes from being a Division One program, especially in athletics, is exponential. Division One versus Division Two. The amount of time that you can be on ESPN and on those national platforms um, is just so much greater than D2. And I think that was a piece of it. CBU does an amazing job of recruiting international students and students all over the nation. And so we didn't just want to be a Southern California university, although that is our primary student body for sure, but we want to continue to expand our brand and be a faith-based institution here in Southern California for any student or student athlete to come and be a part of and enjoy a faith-based education. And so I believe that was a big piece of it. They, the president is also incredibly competitive. And so sports is his baby. He, it means a lot to him. And he supports our program significantly and wants to win. And you can see that in what we did in NAIA and what we did in D2. Um, there's a Learfield Cup Award that each division um, has a champion every year. And what that is, is Division Three, Division Two, II, Division One. they take an athletics department and evaluate it based on postseason success, and you earn points. And one program becomes the Learfield Cup champion, meaning overall you're the most successful athletics department in the nation mm -hmm. in that division, and CBU was that program in 2017, mm. um, our final year within uh, D2. So it's not just wrestling, it's not just track and field or swim, all of our sports here are very well supported and have found great success in Division Two. And now as we jump Division One, that expectation is still there. And you know we're uh, excited for this opportunity and we're resourced in a way that we can provide the student athletes the experience needed to go and find success at the highest level. Our soccer team is now competed at the national tournament twice our first two years and won a game um, this past year and so immediate success mm. our track and field sorry cross country team to, had, had a girl took second in the nation um, in our very first year of eligibility and so there is success happening here right away at the division one level and i firmly believe that's a, a part in god's hand having over this program but also the resources and support that we have at this institution here you mentioned faith based a number of times you you just mentioned god there's a, a scripture behind my shoulder here on the wall obviously california baptist private university a baptist university um tell me how important that is not only to the culture of the university but the wrestling program itself yes i mean this university is founded on the values of faith and What's unique about CBU is there's no requirements for the students or student athletes to be of any religion. Um, this is a very judgment-free area. Uh, we have, a t I have a team of 30 young men and we have strong Christian believers who grew up in a Christian family to those who didn't even know about God until we started recruiting them. And that's, that's uh, I really love that aspect of our, our program and our university. But Faith is a big piece of the student experience and the student athlete experience here. Our motto at CBU is to honor Christ through excellence in athletics. And that's in our athletic department. And then the university motto is to live your purpose. So our goal is to bring these students or student athletes here to CBU and to learn what their purpose in life is and to go live that out. Um, and then for my athletes, obviously, is to utilize the platform of wrestling to glorify God and honor Him through our excellence in athletics. And like I said, not all of them are believers, but they're all very open-minded to hearing about the Lord and learning about um, Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that He made for us. And so it's been really special for me as a coach to see these young men come here to CBU and some of them, some of them grow to know the Lord and give their life over to the Lord and know that I will see them in heaven. And so it's, it's a special piece, but there's no judgment. Like I said, we have some individuals that, that aren't believers and that's, and that's fine. I pray with my student athletes, my wrestlers after each practice. We pray before competition, chapel. Each of them are required to attend chapel, which is essentially a church service where they get poured into from a values, ethics, morals, and faith-based standpoint to try to ensure that they not only are academically prepared, you know, athletically successful, but also spiritually developed. And they leave here a better person than, than they came. And that's a big part of our goal and my goal as a coach as well. 
Talk to me about the academic life. What's it, what's what's the classroom size like? What what are we studying here? What's it, what's what are some of the um, the areas that you know of majors that you guys concentrate on? Yeah, Seaview has 145 different majors. Okay. It's massive. There is rare we ever find a recruit that says, "I want this," and we can't provide something for them within the realm that they're looking. Hmm. And CBU, I wish I'd gone to a CBU. I went to UC Davis, 32,000 undergraduate students at the time, one of 200, 300 students in a class. It's so easy to get lost in the sauce. Um, and, but here at CBU, we have a 17 to one student to faculty ratio. And that doesn't mean they'll all be 17 kids in a class. Some will be a little higher, some will be a little lower, but it paints a picture of our small classroom size. Attendance is mandatory. I get notified by the professors of who's missing class and what assignments they're missing. And so there's a lot, being a smaller school, a lot more accountability allows me to make decisions right away and help our student athletes when they start to fall behind rather than waiting till midterms come out. So every three weeks we get updated with their grades. And some of our primary majors are the health sciences, kinesiology, exercise science. A lot of those want to go into coaching, athletic training, um, strength and conditioning. Mm -hmm. So health sciences are big. Business is huge. Our college of business is huge. So many wrestlers are going want to go into marketing, accounting, finance, things of that nature. Um, and then you'll have. We've actually been been it's been unique. We've got a few medical services. So those who want to go into the medical field afterwards, like Chris Island, our heavyweight, one twenty five pounder, Dylan Octoon from last year, and four years ago Austin Klein, who's currently practicing down in Texas in his residency. Hmm. So uh, we work really closely with our faculty. And one of the things I love so much about CBU is our faculty. When we go and we take students. Um, recruits on these tours or hey let's meet with a professor from your area of study we just get to meet another great human being and you know we have so many professors here that care genuinely about the students their primary job is academics not research not getting published or anything like that it's how can I help these students prepare and so that atmosphere that relationship um, is really special and I've seen some young men really benefit from it because it's a hard transition coming from high school to college. There's a lot of unknowns and for us to have professors that say, yes, you might mess up, you might miss this, you might not do it right, but I, I'm gonna give you the opportunity to learn the material. You're not just a butt in the seat that you do it on time or you don't get it. It's like, okay, you, you were late, I want you to learn the material. You can turn this in for half credit if you're willing to put the work in. And so being a smaller private school, we can afford that luxury to our students and student athletes to learn, especially that freshman year, if they make a mistake, to, to how to, what right looks like and get them on the right track so they don't fall behind and drop out. You mentioned support. I mean, it's evident around me just walking, you know, around the campus here um, and already mentioned how the president supports wrestling and the other, you know, the other uh, sports, but student housing, you know, that we see the, the renovations that are going on. Uh, the support that you're getting from the administration through the faculty has got to be tremendous here in order for you guys to really pull off success, right? It does. I mean, I guess it depends on the recruits that you're recruiting, right? Some recruits, maybe they don't care so much about that and it's all about wrestling. But for the most part, this is an overall student athlete experience and most of them want to be taken care of on both sides, athletically and academically and housing. And so it really makes it easy for us. We don't have to try to say something that's not true because we're so well supported. But go look at the dorms, freshmen getting their own living room, their own kitchen, their own bathroom that they share with one or two people rather than a community style living nature. Um, just makes it a lot more convenient and easy because most people would rather, you know, be able to leave their toothbrush in the bathroom and not have to carry it every single day. And so when we have those luxuries, it, it is really nice because it provides a different student experience that, um, that I think most students and parents enjoy. Riverside, California, Southern California. How many Division I wrestling programs are in Southern California? One. <laughs> There's one of us. There's one. There is. And three hours, some is the closest near in Bakersfield. Bakersfield. Got Poly, not four and a half in the Central Coast area. I think when I visited up in the Bay Area, you know, Division Two, San Francisco State yep. is 
might be the only D2 school in the state? It was. Menlo is transitioning Division Two, and so is Vanguard University. So now it's great to see that expansion and that growth for them. So we have... I'm t- uh, maybe one hand, five D2 to Division One colleges, six maybe, in this huge state of mm-hmm. wrestling-rich California. What kind of opportunity do you have down here in Southern California? You know, it's obviously California wrestling, especially high school level, is deep. It's deep. We saw, I think the 144 pound weight class had four or five nationally ranked guys and one of them dropped down to, to 138 and, and did well. And so there is a ton of talent here in California. Um, there's been a stereotype though, that in order to do well in college, you need to leave California. And what I'm excited to see is that start to shift. Stanford has exploded with some success. Cal Poly, John Ceridas is doing great things over there. And now CBU, we're being able to keep some of California's top talent and show them what this opportunity to be a part of building something special looks like. So this next recruiting class we have with Sonny Kling just won a state title after being a three-time California finalist. I'm really excited about him. Paul Kelly from Poway, nationally ranked in the top five, done incredibly well on all stages, um, freestyle, Greco, folk style. And uh, Remy Maria was ranked third in the state, just placed in state. David Alonzo took third this past weekend from Palm Desert, just up the road. So being able, so that's four guys that we have within an hour and a half of CBU, just within an hour and a half of us that are coming to CBU is, is, is special. And so we're gonna continue to look to keep California's top talent here in Southern California and allow them, there's something special about having a career close to your family and friends. And I got to do that at UC Davis just a couple hours away and have my parents in the stands for every event without having to worry about them needing to spend money to fly hours to see me. And so we wanna to continue to provide that opportunity and develop this program and develop faith in the California community that the kids can come here and find national level success. And that's that's the direction of this program right now. And we're gonna to continue to pour into it and, and pull them out here to Southern California. And we're also being a private school, the cost is the same, whether you're in state or out of state. So that's nice that allows us to also open up and recruit across the nation to bring individuals in like um, Caden Olin, who just won a state title from Nebraska, and he's a top 15 ranked recruit. Um, Jeremy Ginter Hmm. from Ohio, he's competing this weekend at the state tournament, looking to get his state title. He's also been ranked top 20 in the nation. And so it's it's a fun process to go out to the recruiting field and find the families and kids that are looking for this, because this is unique. CBU is a unique school. It is a very specific school. We get turned down very quickly. Being a faith-based school in Southern California, a lot of people are gonna say, you know, that's not what I'm looking for, faith-based aspect. I'm not looking to send my kid to California. But those who are looking for it, it's so great to share this with them and get to let them know what is being built down here. CBU isn't Los Angeles, isn't San Francisco. We are our own little pocket of a faith-based institution that's doing something special. And it's, it's, it's fun to share the story and the vision that we're building. Well, you've mentioned all the amenities and all of the perks that CBU has to offer the student athlete. What you haven't talked about is yourself. What are you bringing to this program? What kind of stamp have you put on this program since Coach Zaleski has has left the program and now you're running it at the Division I level? Yeah, you know... Obviously, Coach Zaleski was my coach, and so I learned so much from him as an athlete back from 2002, 2007, and then really special to come back 10 years later and coach with him as a coach and learn from him on that side. And one of the main things I learned from him is is patience, and it's a tough thing as a coach. You know, I see this program, I see its capabilities, and I see where it can be, but things happen, you know? We were looking at last year a really incredible year with two number one recruits with MJ Gaetan and Mitch, Mitchell Messenbrink coming in, um, both of which are now nationally ranked individuals, but uh, you know, it doesn't always go as planned. And that's where I think faith is so important um, to know that God has a plan for me and for this program and for these young men that I can trust him even in those challenging times that he's gonna continue to bless us and bring the right men and families that wanna be a part of this program. And for me, it's that mentality, that aspect that helps me continue to come here every single day, work as hard as I can for these young men and their families to try to help them find success like Coach Z gave me and my assistant coaches. What we've seen in the last couple of years has been fun. 
Um, obviously last year was challenging for us from a dual perspective. It's gonna take time to build 10 guys. But what we saw with Hunter Leak at 33 and Elijah Griffin being ranked early on with wins over Iowa State opponents, and Tara Keen and Swiderski, um, and then to see those guys potentially qualify, unfortunately, Eli's injury. And then coming back this year, and we went from two Division One wins to five Division One wins in one year. We have now three individuals that are ranked in the nation. Um, and so, what, one, two, I think we're up to 10 wins over individual nationally ranked individuals on our team and each year that number grows and builds our guys confidence and faith in what they're doing and so that's my goal is to trust this process continue to give them what was given me when i was an athlete and what i saw succeed and and have patience through um this the the challenges of the ups and downs as we continue to climb uh, this ladder of success for this program you know we we talked off camera about uh, your success at Division Two and, and, and the recent news of, of Notre Dame College closing down. You experienced your alma mater closing down. You know, we take for granted fans, people that are immersed in the, in, the, in the sport, take for granted that it's all going like this, especially on the women's side, right? It's all going up, 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 up. But there are those, those setbacks. What, from your experience with UC Davis, what do you not do here to make sure something like that happens? I think wrestling as a whole, we need to make sure that we're looking at all aspects of the student athlete. For a period of time there, it was just about wrestling. And sometimes we miss the mark on what's the behavior outside of the wrestling room, what's their academics outside of the wrestling room. And so for me, it's ensuring that my student athletes are well balanced all the way across. So how are we doing in the room? And if we're struggling, what do we need to do to get that brought back up? You know, APR is something, academic progress rate, where if your student athletes aren't retained or graduated, you could be sanctioned by the NCAA and lose scholarship, NCAA opportunities. And so it's really, really important to the NCAA and to universities that you maintain a good APR and that you are graduating your individuals and retaining them semester after semester. So making sure that their student experience here is good. And that's a challenge right now with this transfer portal and everything. It can be really quick to say, well, I'm not happy in this moment, maybe I'll transfer but trying to generate a mentality of trusting the process when it doesn't go perfect, trusting your coaches and staying on the path is huge. But when it comes to those programs dropping, I wanna make sure that our, our student athletes understand that they are student athletes. This is an academic endeavor that we're gonna pursue with everything, but we're also gonna find success academically. And then the behavior, you know, when, especially at a faith-based institution, it makes it easier. You know, I think if you're at a state school or something different, there is a, a different social atmosphere there that I'm blessed that I don't have to worry about that much. If you're coming to CBU, you know that partying is not gonna be a big part of your, um, of your experience here. And so that decreases that fear or risk for me. Not completely, this is still a college campus, okay? And so, you know, student, uh, college kids will be college kids, but overall, there's a much stronger sense of um, priorities here at CBU. And so that is my goal to make sure I have a well-rounded athlete. I'm pouring into them on all fronts and maintaining accountability for them on all fronts. That next piece is endowment. And now I'm a second year program, a big piece. I think of any mid-major program is gonna have to be ultimately trying to assist the university in maintaining your program from a financial standpoint. With NIL coming, uh, or here I mean, it's, it's gonna be unique to where finances get shifted when it comes to those revenue generating sports and Olympic sports. And so for me, ultimately, I believe that I, I, I will be looking to pursue an endowment and growing over time to help this institution continue to provide the resources that they've constantly provided us um, in preparation for a shift in the NCAA landscape in the future. Oh, unbelievable. I mean, you, you, you still get on the mat, I assume. I do. I do. <laughs> I see. So there's that, but you're running this like a CEO. You've got all that. You've got to be years down the road and try to navigate whatever's out there. We have the benefit of just sitting in the stands, you know, in, 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 at the NCAAs or, or, or at, a, at a duel or whatnot. But really, you have to operate this like a, like a business. You got to love it. Not just the sport. You got to love all of it in order to do what you do. So there's a reason why you're here, obviously, right? 
Yes, I believe so. God has had his hand on my life um, every step of the way, even when I turn my back on him, um, constantly putting people in my life. You know, going out to the East Coast at Sacred Heart University was where I was at before this and learning how to build. It was the, it was the worst program in Division One at the time. There was five athletes on the team when Andy Lozier got there and I got there the year after that. So to build that in the EIWA and see the success that John Clark has had since we've been left has been amazing. He's got 70 plus on that roster. That's what he told me. <laughs> it's wild, but it's, it's, it's genius. That's, what's, yeah. that's, what, that's what they want. Yeah. They want a big roster to help the, that enrollment, those tuition dollars to support them and all the others and bless his heart, bless him, <laughs> yeah. what he's doing because that's, that's challenging. I was, I was out there. And so, you know, to learn from that experience with Andy and building and then come out here and learn from Coach Z and have my experience in D1 and the six years that I spent in the military, everything coming together to form who I am, you know, that's how I lead is based on my past experiences. And I do believe that, yeah, God's got me here for a reason. I'm going to continue to do everything I can for this program and my student athletes and enjoy it along the way is, is important. And that, that can be challenging at times because I'm, I'm incredibly competitive and I want to win. But with where we're at, it's, it's, it's a process. But man, the win we got over Air Force this year was something special at, at Colorado Springs. And then to get another Big 12 win against Utah Valley last weekend for our first time getting two wins, it just provides that validation that, that, that the work is not um, void. You know, it, it's coming together and we're going to continue to build here and, and enjoy the moments along the way. One of the things I love to ask is, you know, give your recruitment speech, but really you've been doing that this whole time, whether you know it or not, the highlights and, and everything about the culture around here, it's, it permeates what we're talking about here. I do want you to talk to the wrestling mom. I'm married to one. Talk, recruit that, that her son. Tell, tell that wrestling mom what she's going to give away and what she's going to receive when, 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 her, when her son comes here. As a new parent myself, it's, uh, it's interesting how your perspective shifts a little bit. But, you know, for CBU, when talking with a mom inside California, outside California, we always have to talk about California first <laughs> because it's California and it comes with a lot of stereotypes of what are the influences of the culture on the West Coast. And CBU is a gated community where all of our student athletes live on campus all four or five years that they are here so that they can be poured into from a faith-based standpoint that, um, you know, that we talked about earlier, of the core values of CBU, of, of living, living your purpose and honoring Christ through excellence. And if they came to my program, I, I just hope that they would know that they would be poured into as if they were my kid. I, I love each and every one of them and I really enjoy working with them. It's challenging at times because that success doesn't come, but try to be there for them and help them develop as an athlete and as a young man and understanding that success doesn't happen right away, but we're gonna continue each day to put one foot in front of each other in order to find success to hopefully develop the habits that they need in order to find success when they leave here. Whether that be success in their work life, success in future athletic careers, success in the relationships. Um, and just know that we are a faith-based school, so those values will come from, from the Bible, and we will use the Bible to encourage them and help them grow as a young man. You're about a week away from Big 12, right? You're going Tulsa, and so you're, you're going to have a practice here in just a little bit, but tell us, let us behind the curtain a little bit. What are you doing a week out from, you know, really it's, it's really po the postseason stretch starts now. What are you doing in that room? We are preparing our wrestlers for the best performance they can have. And the work has been put in at this point. They're not going to learn anything new. Um, they're not going to get any better shape. They're not going to get any weaker. Right now, it's, it's fine-tuning, perfect repetitions over and over. Shorter volume, higher intensity. Everything is hard, crisp, fast. We've actually had a motto for the last month because our challenges in the first half of the year was finishing. Finishing takedowns, finishing matches, having the opportunity to upset other teams, but not getting the win in the end, whether we were ahead or down by one. And so now um, we say as a team when we break is one person chance finish, and then everybody says hard. And we say finish fast, finish strong. And then Lancers on three, one, two, three, and that's what we wanna do. We wanna finish fast, hard, and strong in everything that we do. And this is our 
Big 12. We're looking to finish strong here so that we can have that opportunity to see the CDU singlet for the first time at the NCAA tournament in Kansas City. And so we're just having these short practices, helping them feel good, believe in what they're doing, encouraging them every step of the way to know that they are where they are and they have the off offensive weapons. They just have to go out and execute it confidently and, and leave it on the mat and good things will happen. Well, that's all I have. What am I missing on your end? What else do you have to add? Um, you know, I think we covered a lot of things. Um, uh, well, oh, one thing that I probably haven't talked about that we're really excited about is our RTC. Okay, so yeah. So we just finalized launching our regional training center and our website will open up here in the coming weeks where now we will be a resource to Southern California as okay. a whole. 250 mile radius, practices once a week in the spring and sometime in the summer and fall for any students and student athletes to come and train with our athletes and have a neutral site to just get better at a D1 at that D1 level and to get those feels and those coaching and that technique and so that's something that I've been working hard with coach Leskin and I've been trying to do it for four or five years and the university's gotten behind it and I've got a great board of directors led by President Lenny Zaleski is the president of our board and so that's a really exciting thing that we've, uh, we've been working on for some time that we're excited to offer for our athletes but also future recruits and those who maybe want to compete after they graduate. Uh, you know you mentioned well, really the, the the secret to success is is having that administrative support like what you've got and then from from the mat on up it's it's really those programs have RTCs they have that you're you're really you know you're not reinventing the wheel but you're also set forth on a path in order to be successful down here in Southern California. Yeah, if we're gonna compete against those big 12 programs on a recruiting platform, we gotta make sure that we're offering everything and more to a degree. And I think our more is our ability to care for the student athlete. I, and, I, and, that's, and that's just from my perspective from a, a faith-based school. I just feel like here we are able to give them a lot more from housing to food, but also just attention um, because there's not so much going on. But. I love, I love this university. You know, I'm from Northern California, so I, what's unique is I told myself I'd never live in Southern California, because yeah. in California is a Northern Southern beef. But once you get out of California, you come back and realize it's, there's a lot of beautiful parts of this state, and Riverside is one of them. Really grown to love it here, and I'm excited to see what happens in the future. Doesn't hurt that there's a little rumor that the Olympics are coming here soon. Yeah, is it 2028? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was fun. We actually partnered with Beat the Streets okay. um, this past January, as well as Titan Mercury, to run a senior level competition. So before our duel against Iowa State, we competed in LA County for the first time at Mount San Antonio College. The first time a D1 match was in LA County in I think over 30 years. Wow. And prior to that, we had some Titan Mercury athletes competing. Um, my assistant coach, Elroy Perkin, is still competitive and trying to qualify for the Olympics and Olympic trial. So he competed and uh, he won his match. And then we had Adeline Gray here. And so we had a bunch of freestyle matches just trying to bring light to what's coming here and partner with those other organizations that are trying to promote the Olympics. And we'll continue to be a resource for them and hopefully the Southern LA Olympics come 2028 with maybe some of our athletes running tables or being a part of it, but we're really, yeah, really excited for what's coming here in, the, in four straight short years. Well, I appreciate your time. Coach, it's been an honor to be here and see the place. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, my pleasure. Take care.